Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about growing, harvest, and cure, and where all growers tend to forget that final step. Before we get into today's video, folks, if you wouldn't mind, new here to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And if you guys are looking to support our farm or any of our sponsors and partners, check out all the website links in the description of this video. Okay, folks, so on this channel, we cover a lot, and I mean a lot, of growing, growing techniques, nutrients, NPK values, all that good stuff. And although that is fantastic to talk about, there's a lot of things that I personally have skipped on this channel, but are very important. And every year, this time of year, I get email bombarded by folks that are having trouble with harvest. I also start getting a lot of questions probably around the end of October, early November about the cure, finding mold, all these other things. And so I'm here today to tell you that growing is probably the easiest part of it all. It can all go down the tubes with the harvest. It can all go right down the drain with a cure. And I'm here to tell you guys some tricks of the trade to make sure that you have a great harvest and you have a good cure. Now, forget about the growing. We've covered that all summer long. If you guys are at this step, you are most likely at harvest season. Now, harvest season is really important. And I think there's a term out there when, uh, when referring to the stock market called paper hands versus diamond hands. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Paper hands growers versus diamond hand growers. Who comes out on top with that one? Well, it really depends on your area. It also depends on the weather you're experiencing with your outdoor grow. So for folks that live in the West that have had dry conditions, you can have diamond hands who don't deal with pests as much as we do on the East Coast and the West Coast. You know, the, the middle of the country growers have it really easy when it comes to humidity and stuff. So they can really push that harvest and really dial it in to perfection as long as their weather holds up. Here on the East Coast, it's a crap shoot. It really is because this year it's been actually really good. Last year was pretty good. So fingers crossed, we've only got a couple weeks left for our harvest. Out on the East Coast though, we do deal with a lot of pests and I have been bombarded with emails about bud rot and I'm gonna reiterate here folks once you see bud rot you're in trouble uh, you need to get rid of it and you're also on the clock to probably harvest within the next week or two it really comes down to if you're going to save what's left of the plant or lose a good portion of that plant because once it's there it spreads like wildfire the other thing that I want to talk to you guys about is when you have that harvest, you know, the diamond hands versus paper hands. The paper hands folks, they get super nervous. They, they see one thing and they cut the plant. And although your harvest may be good, now you're into the cure process way early with buds that maybe weren't ready to be harvested. And then you've got a problem with your curing process. So a lot of folks, what they'll do is they use a cardboard box or something like that. I've always suggested having open air. Uh, if, if you can do it, I've done it every year down here in Virginia. Our weather really does turn great for drying. Uh, that goes all the way back to tobacco harvests and stuff like that. You know, back in the day, Virginia just has really good drying weather when it comes to mid to late October. Uh, we don't get a lot of rain, it stays dry, humidity drops, all good things. However, if you guys are in a wetter climate or something like that, the cure is important. And where a lot of folks mess up is thinking they can just walk away for two to three weeks and let it hang in a room or hang in a closet or a grow room or wherever you guys are curing. And then you come in there to find powdery mildew and mold everywhere. I get a bunch of emails asking me, how do I save it? How do I save it? There is no saving it. Uh, particularly when once it's cured or dried, there's no saving it, folks. So hear me when I say this. This is a full step process. We are getting into the heart of harvest season. That's just the beginning of the hands-on work that it takes to make sure you have a good cure, to have a good end product. 
If you guys have any other tips or tricks, leave them in the comment section of this video. I wanted to get this video out there because I get a lot of emails about it this time of year. And by no means am I the wizard of knowing all these answers. But what I can tell you is what I experience here on the East Coast. I do know that we have a big country and there are a lot of people in different areas that experience different things. But what I find with most growers is they really do skip this curing process. They go, I grow, I harvest, I consume. Not the case, guys. Curing process coming up here soon. You really want to be on top of your game. Have a section, something set up, ready to go. Fans, dark, cool. Hey, if you can even get an air conditioner or a dehumidifier in there and you can set that humidity level even better. But that's what you really need to make sure that you have a good product. Also inspecting every branch as it comes in there because mold spreads like crazy. So once it's in there, you're blowing that air around. All you're doing is spreading those spores. So folks, hear me when I say this, get ready for the hardest part of the season, which is harvest and curing. But again, if you guys have tricks to the trade, leave it for other viewers down in the comment section below. I want to hear from you guys. Hey, if you think I'm doing something wrong, I'm, I'm always open ears when it comes to learning new things about this particular process. But folks, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, don't forget, if you want to get in touch with me, Facebook, Instagram, and email. But I am busy this year, folks, so comment section is the best way to get in touch with me. But that's it. Happy harvest. Hope you all stay happy, healthy, and I will see you in another video.